Batik is one of those techniques that's been traditionally thought difficult or complicated, fun to do, but working with very hot waxes and then having to get that wax out at the end of the project was just really a painful process. The exciting thing that we discovered is soy wax, which gives you all the beauty of traditional batik techniques without all the messing around. Basically, I can melt soy wax in an oil burner or a saucepan, and it doesn't have to be a really high heat. And that's what we're going to use. The technique of batik means building up layers of wax and colour, wax and colour, wax and colour. And each layer of wax keeps or holds the colours you've created below it. So it's best to build up our colours from light, getting stronger and stronger or darker and darker towards the top. Um, I'm going to show you that through three or four layers and uh, I've got my wax already heated. With liquid radiance though, what we must be aware of is the fact that if we put too much into the fibre, the fibre will become stiff. So I'm going to show you methods of colouring and blotting out that are going to keep the fibres nice and light and supple. This will work on any fabric. I'm working on a, a very lightweight uh, cotton batiste so that it's really quick and easy to dry between coats. We've got here poly cottons, we've got knit fabric, we've got polyester crepe, we've got silk, basically any fabric at all except anything that's really hard to get something into, like unbleached calico or sweatshirt fabric. It would be just too difficult to get those fibres saturated with the wax. Anyway, let's go. We have a range of equipment here for getting um, our pattern onto our fabric. I'm going to do some simple dots for starters because we want to keep this quick. Because these brushes are pre-loved and have been in wax before, I'm just melting the wax out of my brush before I start. And as I apply the wax, you'll see the fabric become translucent. When you're doing your first coat of wax, it's easy to get a bit carried away. You don't want to put on so much that you've got nowhere to place the rest of your designs. So I might stop there and we let that wax dry before we can apply our colour. As soon as I can see that go back to white, I know that it's dry enough. Go hunting for all sorts of things that you can use for this. I was excited to find this paint stirrer recently, and I reckon that's going to be fabulous on big pieces of fabric. It'll fit easily into a saucepan to pick up the wax and then you just print it down. You've got your potato mashes and things, even plastic forks cotton reels. When you're working with these little stamps it's good to have a cup hook on there so that you don't have to put your hand in the wax but it's not so hot that it will give you a nasty burn anyway. So I think we might be just about ready. Yes the wax has gone white and we're ready to colour. Before we start spraying the colour on let's think a little bit about the colour. It's best to start off with a light colour and then build your colours up. I've actually started with white fabric and used the wax to keep that whiteness first. On my orange piece I then added yellow, applied wax to keep the yellow, added red, red plus yellow gives orange and got my pale orange spots. Added a slightly deeper red to get a deeper orange. So each colour that you apply is going to be affected by the ones you have put on before it. Here we started off with the white fabric, went magenta, 
purple over magenta gave this uh, fuchsia colour and then I think I applied red over that to give the Genesis purple in the background of that piece. For the one I'm about to do now, I'm going to start off with lime. Now we know that this is not a messy process if you do it right. So these are skills we've already talked about. If I were working outside without wind, I would be able to hang that in a tree or on my clothesline. Make sure if you're working over concrete or even lawn that you put down an old sheet and that way you're not making a mess in your garden or all over the house. We're going to work in really close to our piece. I'll hold it up and pretend I'm a tree. So I can do this even in my studio. And there's not colour going everywhere. I'll stop being a tree now and lay it down flat because it is a little more goof proof when you're working inside. Okay, that's nice and evenly applied now. And we know that excess is the enemy. So I've prepared just a piece of white absorbent fabric there. It could be any colour absorbent fabric. And I'll lay my work of art down in it, flip it back over, and blot out the excess. Look, you could do this with an old sheet or an old towel or something, but you'd be wasting all that lovely colour. And I can create another piece of fabric here just from my leftovers. There'll still be a little bit of movement in that fabric because while there's moisture there's movement. But very soon that will be dry and when it is completely dry I can add my next coat. Our fabric is dry so it's now time to add our next bit of pattern. And I think I'll go with one of these little stamps cup hook there just makes it a whole lot easier to handle in the hot wax. I'm working on really fine fabric so I have to be sure to shake off all the excess wax without drying it too much. Stamp it down, lift it up and you can see our next lot of patterning happening. Of course you can leave more wax on your stamp or on whatever gadget you're using if you're working on heavier fabric. It is okay to stamp over your dots because that will now leave a little white patch under. And I've got a spot of wax where I don't want it so maybe we'll add a few extra spots as well. To make it look deliberate. And we wait for that one to dry before we add our next colour. Waxy starfish are now dry. So we're ready to add our next colour. Going darker, I think I'll go cyan with this one. And on it goes. You see the colour is not penetrating where the wax is at all. That's really wet. Nice even colour. And we blot out the excess. So the cyan on the lime background has given us a sort of an undersea colour happening. Now 
these mop-ups end up very random but also make beaut backgrounds of their own. And now we can see our lime starfish which we will let dry before we can add more wax. Our fabric is now completely dry and finished, so out come the pins. And into my sink I've put some hot water from my hot water tap, so that's as hot as I can get it. Any detergent will do the job here. And to that I'm also going to add just a little bit of boiled water to zing the heat up a bit. Please make sure that your fabric is completely dry before you do this. We know that liquid radiance is stable when it's dry so we're not actually going to lose any colour provided it is totally dry. So in it goes. And I guess it's a bit like washing woolens. We're just going to gently stir that really hot water through the fabric and the wax is already starting to come out. We have a septic water system here and I have been assured that none of the product that I put down my drains is harming that septic system at all. So it's nice to know that the soy wax is totally non-toxic and non-polluting. It's a natural product. My suds are all gone. I'll just gently squeeze that out. And I will do two or three more rinses in the hot sudsy water like that to just remove the last of the wax. Um, then peg it on the line to dry and heat set it in the normal way.